Hello. So, um, let me grab something. Okay, so uh, often people said, "Oh, nice, you made a uh, isobaric um, planar panel," and uh, I'm not sure if that does anything. Well, let me explain for those that don't know, and I'm not, you know, I don't know much about dynamic drivers, at least not enough. Anyhow, if you have like a driver, let's say um, like this, one driver. Isobaric, you could like put another driver here, uh, connect to both, and then you have uh, the same surface area but two drivers moving the same amount of air. So, what you actually did is uh, make the driver uh, twice as strong, and your cabinet size could be halved. There might be other benefits I don't know of. One of it is if you do it this way, that distortion that has to do, let's say, with this movement, um, like in this direction, uh, this speaker moves also this in, in this direction, but when it moves the other way around, uh, it cancels the distortion that was associated with this movement. Like the cone moving this way, uh, this side. So you could remove some distortions that, or uh, non-linearities maybe I don't know, of the speaker. And if you reverse it, and then reverse the polarity, you kind of null that. It's a bit like a null test, except it's mechanical, so it's never gonna be perfect. It's not electrical. So there's another option that you do it like this, uh, which I think is the, the dumbest way to do it, because you don't have this benefit of the distortion or something linear thingies being nullified. Nullified! Now, I had a video where I had the wooden piece with all the magnets in there. And I'm going to draw a top view of that and show you that it's not actually an isobaric. It, it looks like it and I would assume it would be because there's like two you know, drivers moving in tandem. And it is sort of, but it has a few reasons why I build it. Not because it's like an isobaric. So we're gonna, I'm, I'm going to draw a top view of this wooden plate with all the magnets. So let's say... This is my wooden plane. And uh, here are magnets. This is one magnet, then there's a space in between where I can move. This is a magnet. And this is a magnet. Now, um, do I, am I gonna, yeah, okay. So let's say this is south on this direction or on, on this top you know the magnets are like that's not making it any more clear well anyhow um, let's do it like uh, this south 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 now the coil will be sitting here, let's say. It's a bit exaggerated. Oh. And the coil will be sitting here, and here, and maybe here, and there. And for this foil, uh, the same. <coughs> now, if this foil moves in this direction, away from the magnet structure, this foil moves also in this direction. Except in this case, it moves towards the magnet. Now, this foil, when it moves away from the magnet, the magnetic field goes down. 
In this foil, when the foil moves the same direction, the magnetic field goes up. And since the magnet structure is the same on both sides, that should be kind of nullified. So, if we take a look at a curve of... Uh, let's say we want to know what the magnetic field is from the magnet to, to the membrane or to the coil here. So, this part we want to measure. So, this is zero millimeter from the magnet and this will be six. So we have one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the distance. And this will be the magnetic field in milli Tesla. Let's say this is just random. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, whatever, you know? If we measure this to there, the magnetic field will be strong there because it's near the magnets and it looks a bit like this. It's maybe a, a quite simplified thingy. Like this. That's for this membrane. If we do it for this membrane, it will be reversed and it looks more like this. Uh, whoop. More like this. Now if you combine the two, it should sort of look like this. Now, that might be somewhere uh, in the middle, like here. <clears throat> so, efficiency is not, not very high in this method, but the idea, the idea is that, uh, well, they move, if you look at both foils together, uh, you know, they create sound, that they kind of move in a more linear or actually straight line of magnetic field. And this is what you see in the measurements of this combination. Now it's never going to be perfect by the way, so this might not look this clean of course, but that's the idea why I made it. And you can see that mostly in the second order harmonics because that's usually where non-linearity of a motor, magnetic motor or driver motor or whatever how you call it, is visible. And you can see it in any base planar magnetic single ended, so with only magnets behind the foil. <coughs> so, uh, magnet, 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 and then the foil is sitting here. Coil, coil. And then, usually, in a single ended, you have steel here, where the magnets are sitting on. Oops, steel. Now, in this case, what, what's happening is the magnetic field moves through the steel to the other magnet and creates a field here. And there's your coil. In this case it does not have steel, so the field above the magnets is weaker, but it's the same on both sides. And that's why I thought, you know, if I get rid of the steel, my field will be weaker on one side, or at least it will be weaker above the magnets, but I could use two sides of the magnet, and that is kind of, kind of the same. But, mostly the most interesting thing is this. So what I did right now, I use a uh, way bigger X-Max, so the distance from these magnets to this membrane is uh, 6 millimeter now. Normally I would use 3 millimeter. And that's more efficient, and that still is the case, it is more efficient. But if I used 6 millimeter uh, as a single ended, like this, the difference when the membrane moves towards this side, 6 millimeters, 
the field is like completely collapsed almost and if it moves towards the magnets it's like insanely much stronger and you will not have that or at least it will be far less of a thing in this two membrane thingy with one row of magnets so yes it does look like isobaric but uh yeah it isn't actually isobaric so that's clear now uh, there's another thing uh, I was playing with damping not damping I will put on the magnets like there what I think what I was wondering why I, I put a little bit of uh, felt there and the complete resonance was gone way too far it gone and it sounds weird as well like overly damped it's not it's not nice to listen to either and what I think is happening uh, these foils are actually connected besides that they're moving in the same direction they're also connected by the air in between the foils <clears throat> and if you put felt there it really kind of hurts the uh, resonance it's not for the foil it's not easy anymore to to uh, move in tandem or at least move far outward because they're kind of working a little bit against them if you dump it in the middle I think this is just a um, theory so what I did right now is like only a small amount of damping only in the middle where the foil moves you know the furthest but I can imagine you can play with the open area in between the foils quite a bit uh, and I noticed maybe damping on the front side which is regular normally you, you would not do that might be beneficial and leave the air in between the foils as easy to move as possible so they do their thing and only damp the membranes on the outside you might damp only one membrane because if you damp this one this one will be damped as well because they kind of are connected now the problem I might be seeing is that air is compressible so maybe they do not like that and you have to damp both foils <coughs> Uh, also by damping only the middle part for instance it chooses the easiest ma uh, way it, it damps it but also the rest of the air will like go to the place where it can move easily more easily to the other foil this could be beneficial could be problematic I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah it could be like become wobbly or something so that's the idea and I hope you kind of got the idea because I'm not a yeah this is not my thing explaining things usually I you know I know how it works kind of in my head but <laughs> that's it <clears throat> so uh, now I will play uh, two or three songs because uh, so a few people requested some some something else than the classical music uh, today I did change the damping and now the bigger foil that I made yesterday is only done by a little bit. I don't need EQ anymore. And you use none, none EQ at all for the low end. Uh, and the right panel is still the a little bit smaller panel and has a too high resonance. And you can clearly hear that uh, if you are sitting in the room and you listen to them one by one, the left one, the bigger one sounds definitely better. And then I receive a call. Ah, since it only went over one time, I'm pretty sure it's one of those fucking spam bullshit calls. Oh no, it's my sister. Okay, I have to call her back. Uh, yeah, uh, I thought I might not explain this quite clearly. So, this graph will be membrane 1, 1, and this is membrane 2. That will be this one. So yeah, uh, that's the idea. Does it work? Well, uh, the only thing I can check if it works is looking at, in this case, the second order of distortion, for instance, that drops quite a bit. So uh, yeah, it is at least doing something. Um, and that's, that's good. Because the X-Max is way, maybe a little bit too big even. 
but you can see clearly when I use two foils that it drops. So that's cool. Maybe I'll uh, use XMAX of 5 or 4, I, I'm not sure yet. Uh, there's many things I could try still. Things like the type of membrane, I could like put it through a corrugator. And why I might want to do that. And then stretch it, so it is still stretched, but corrugation uh, as well. So it's a lower resonance, but more stiff. And the reason I might want to do that is um, if you add two foils, like let's say foil one alone with the magnets has a resonance of 43, just a random number. If you add number two, uh, it becomes like 50 something. And I would like to have a resonance of 45, 45, 50. Well, 45 would be nice. But by the looks of it, it adds like 10 to 15 hertz. So I would have a, I need a resonance of 25 hertz to achieve that same goal. Now, you can do that, but that means that this membrane becomes wider, wider, wider. And I'm not sure if I want that because I think that's kind of, uh, yeah, I want it to be a little bit more compact if possible. But yeah, let's go uh, go and play a tune, I guess. Well, two or three tunes even. Or two, I don't know. It's always a surprise what will be banned by uh, YouTube, so uh, maybe we'll end up with one tune, maybe zero tunes.